Hi there, I'm Josh Finn from J&H Aerospace, and normally this would be where you're waiting for our weekly video. Well, we're going to do something different because there's an issue we have to discuss. So what is that discussion? If you're a Science Olympiad student, you're familiar with some of these propellers. If you are a casual outdoor or FAC flyer, you've probably seen them as well. Any Anybody that's that's been flying a little bit is familiar with at least most of these, except maybe this one. We'll talk about it in a minute. But the bottom line is, there's uh, I think there's four or five different manufacturers represented here. All of these propellers have one thing in common They are for, for the purposes of rubber-powered indoor flying. They all have one thing in common here in the United States. All of these are illegal for competition. Yes, I said that correctly. These are all illegal for AMA and FAI indoor free flight competition. Now, you as a Science Olympiad student are saying, excuse me? These are what I use. This is Icara, this is Ifas, this is uh, Papatong, one of the new ones we sell. Um, you won't be familiar with this. This is an Admison uh, 3D printed propeller. Um, this is a cheap Chinese plastic prop. These are all specifically banned in the rules because they are pre-manufactured propellers. And there is a specific call out in the Academy of Model Aeronautics general rules against this. And the newly designed FAI rules uh, will dictate this specifically as well, although it's been understood there as well. Now, obviously there are some AMA competition classes like Easy B and F1L that dictate wooden propellers. So obviously you wouldn't want that for that. You'd want, you know, something like this. Um, now let's talk about this. Uh, a student of mine and I both built these pro built propellers like this together. This one's mine. His looks identical. Who made which one? Dunno. Because let's have that discussion for a second. These two propellers, these are nice looking props, right? These are F1R props. Now, one of these was built by my wife and one of them was built by me. Imagine living in my world where these two live in the same box and you have to pick one out and figure out which one is yours so you can fly your airplane. That's a fun discussion. In my case, I've recognized that rib is out of place on Hope's propeller. Yeah, yeah, we're down to that. We are down to that. Now, separate issue is both of these have variable pitch propeller hubs. FAI rules allow you to use these. These are pre-manufactured pro uh, propeller hubs. That's the key distinction. Now, uh, AMA rules specifically dictate that you have to build these yourself, so you can't use these. You would have to build one yourself, except, you know, not that one, because I built that one. Well, let's get on to another fun factoid here. This is my F1D propeller. This is illegal for competition. It complies with F1D rules, except for one. I bought those carbon outlines. So I'm going to have to go, because only, only the hub is protected. So I'm gonna to have to go buy that carbon, or go make that carbon piece myself on, let's show it here, on a mold like this. This is a complex process. We're gonna be doing a video about this eventually. Um, so anyway, uh, so I guess I can't use this F1D propeller, so I'll have to use some of these that came off the mold, except, oh crap. I bought a couple of these. Which ones did I buy and which ones did I make? They all look kind of the same. They all look kind of the same. I don't know which ones I'm allowed to use and which ones I'm not. They all look the same. But them's the rules. Them's the rules. Now let's look at a third case. Y'all saw me review this uh, F1D looking thing on the uh, um, on our channel here recently I, you know, it's been a bit but anyway um, so at the Kibbe Dome you're actually going to have the opportunity to fly 
uh, these in a little informal competition. But if you build this, you'll only be able to use it for the informal competition because this airplane is not legal for AMA competition and soon to be FAI now that the new interpretation is out. There is one thing on this airplane that makes it illegal for AMA competition. As you can see, like most propellers, there is a helical twist to the blade. That comes preformed in, in the kit. That's specifically, specifically mentioned in the rules that you can't do that. Yes, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. That is specifically mentioned in the rules. Now, you say, Josh Finn, you have thrown all this crap at us. Oh, <laughs> the other one, 3D printed propellers, who made that? No, I'm serious. I mean, you can be sent the files and the, all the configuration. Uh, somebody else can dial your 3D printer in, and then um, who made it? The guy that pressed go on the printer? I'm not touching that. I'm seriously, that's, that's what we're down to. So, there is a solution to this. The solution is simple. You support my rules change proposals. <laughs> so I've submitted three, and the reason is because this is a giant mess. Uh, one of them is to simply allow bought variable pitch propeller hubs like we do in FAI classes and have been for 30 years now because that's been allowed, tacitly allowed for since the early 1990s. Um, the other two proposals are kind of hinged together. One is to delete the AMA general rule, which has an exception for indoor free flight. Um, it says plastic propellers, pre-manufactured propellers, yada yada, are allowed except for indoor duration. So that is a proposal. And then there's another one that hinges on that. And I'm going to have links to these all in the description that actually the, there's another one that links to that to delete the uh, language in the AMA indoor rules. So those kind of go together. If the general rule doesn't pass, the, the indoor one can't be voted on. Now, fun fact, even though it's a general rules proposal, that one is only going to be voted on by the Indoor Contest Board. So you're going to have to contact the Indoor Contest Board and I guess theoretically them alone because supposedly they're the only ones who are allowed to vote on it because it doesn't concern the other disciplines. Weird sauce, I don't know why. Um, so all of that's there together. I have a link down in the description that shows um, all, of, all of that information, uh, and I have a link down in the description to each of those proposals. So you can go down there and you can check that out. Now, here's the important thing. I need you to actually email these people and express your opinion. If you think I'm an idiot, tell them so. I'm serious. Tell them. I can live with it. If you think I'm an idiot, email them and tell them so. If you don't think I'm an idiot, if you think this is a good idea, then email them and tell them so, and tell all your friends to email them and tell them so. And here's why. And I know if you're outside the U.S., who cares? Um, absolutely. Um, be my Yeah, you're correct. Just scroll on past. Although you might want to be aware of these issues. So email them and tell them that this is an issue to you and that you think the rules should be changed or should not be changed. And tell all of your friends. This is an uphill battle because most of the people on the indoor contest board are opposed to this idea. Plain and simple, they are opposed to this idea. Uh, most of the indoor people I have talked to on a local basis, um, and when I say local basis, I mean people that fly local contests, are in, regardless of location, whether my district or elsewhere, they are um, they're in favor of, of changing the rules because they think this is ridiculous too. So my point is, um, you are not being heard. So you need to make yourself heard and you need to be loud. And there are some of these people who will ignore you, so you need to be super loud. Uh, we have NIFAS leadership who are opposing us um, and are actively involved in opposing us. That's National Free Flight Society, which is the sort of governing body on this. Whether the AMA owns the contest board or NIFAS owns the contest board, yeah. Now, lastly, why is this truly an issue? Let's say you're a guy who has been building propellers from scratch and you can replicate this thing better than, than the original. That's fantastic. 
I hate to call out the people that buy stuff from me, but I have Science Olympiad customers who have confessed, this is parents, who have confessed to building airplanes for their kids. So there's cheating that goes on. We know that cheating occurs. We have no idea the extent of it. We just know that it exists. I would submit it's pretty widespread. I've talked to other Science Olympiad mentors who believe the same. Also, at the World Championship, there were not just bought propellers, there were bought entire airplanes, and the FAI jury was not willing to enforce those rules. The only way they knew was admissions from people, uh, confessions from people involved. Um, some lied and some didn't, and that's the problem, is who built this propeller? Tell me, who built that propeller? If you can't come up with a, you know, a legal case to define it, that's an issue. All of our rules are supposed to be something that can be verified, otherwise it's an opinion. And I don't know about you, but in competition I have an issue with that. Now, you're not a contest flyer. Should you care? Yes and no. I think this affects the future of the hobby, so that's why you should care. If you're not interested in flying competition, bear in mind, someday you may change that. You know, most of our indoor meets are competitive. We write scores down, and this is a source of contention. So this is something that could relieve that contention. All right, guys, sorry to, um, sorry to be a Debbie Downer and get into all this. Uh, we've got some cool content coming up very soon. We've got a ready-to-fly airplane, sort of. <laughs> yeah, that's not Builder of Model Rule at all, uh, but... That's uh, something that's upcoming and really cool. Uh, we've got some more rocket stuff coming. I have a secret project I'm working on. I don't know when I'm going to be able to release exactly what it is, but it's a secret project, and it's freaking awesome, and y'all are going to love it. Uh, let's see, what else are we doing? Indoor and outdoor free flight nationals are coming up, so see you in Idaho at the indoor free flight nationals, or Muncie, Indiana at the, I said indoor, Muncie is the outdoor. Uh, Science Olympiad Nationals in May, that's going to be pretty awesome. I'm going. Uh, if you're in Technology Student Association, we're going to be at that. So hope to see you at, uh, at one of those events. If you're an RC flyer uh, who couldn't give a rat's behind on this and for some reason you watched this far, uh, first of all, you're crazy. And uh, second of all, we'll see you uh, hopefully around the patch. So. Thank you for your time and your attention, and I apologize for all, all of the uh, extended vid video on this crap, because really that's, that's what it is, but I think it's necessary for the future growth of our hobby. I think we need to start making some changes uh, and start having objective rules after however many years of this. Uh, I'm tired of some people getting away with cheating and some not. So, anyway. Y'all have a great time, and uh, check out those links. Please email those people. Please email them. Let your voice be heard. Please, please email them. And have a great time doing it. Be happy warriors in whatever it is that you're doing, and uh, enjoy flying. Thermals, heat from the lights, uh, fat lipo packs, glow fuel, whatever, all that stuff. See ya.